Hello, and welcome to a special edition of Humber News. I'm Stephen Donkers. And I'm Chanel Sagan. Today, we'll be revisiting the semester's top news stories as reported by second-year journalism students. We've been following Toronto's transit saga throughout the year. The battle came to a head during a special city council meeting where LRT supporters crushed Mayor Rob Ford's subway dreams. Mamta Ludo was there as the drama unfolded in council chambers. Transit is a hot topic in Toronto. A new project will see either subways or LRTs built on Shepherd Avenue. This debate has been going on for months now. What's your Let point me of finish. Privilege? Let me finish. The City Council held a special meeting this morning. The Council engaged in a heated discussion highlighting the pros and cons of both modes of transportation. City Councillors are considering factors such as funding and passenger capacity. Mayor Rob Ford has been vocal in his support for the subways, but not all councillors agree with him. One of them is Councillor Adam Wan. We'll bankrupt the TTC building subways. We'll serve more people with more transit if we build LRTs. The, the question answers itself. A large crowd was on hand to hear both sides of the argument. Councillor Mamolidi was outspoken in his support for the subways. And the mandate from our community uh, was, and it was unanimous the vote, uh, was to stop the LRT. The councillors spent all day in the chambers. The day started off with a civil atmosphere, but tension grew as time went on. Doug Ford asked tough questions of the new TTC chair, Andy Byford. If you had funding for Shepherd, would you build LRTs or would you build subways? Byford considered opportunity costs and other factors before answering Ford's questions. In my professional opinion, uh, this city needs more subways and I would, uh, I would prefer to build a subway on Shepherd. Other aspects such as weather conditions, transfer timings, traffic and operational costs for both LRTs and subways were considered. After a long, intense day of the debate, the council still hasn't reached a decision. They will meet again tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. This is Mantalula, Humber News. From one mode of transportation to another, motorists are paying record prices at the pump, and some ind ind industry experts are predicting the cost of gas will go even higher. How do rising prices affect commuters? Bailey Martell has the story. $1.29 for a liter of gas? Five years ago, this price would have seemed absurd, but this is the lowest motorists will see for months to come. we, we got no choice. It's the government that's screwing us. Sir and Talon owns a kitchen and cabinet company and says the amount he spends on gas has risen by over $400 monthly. Uh, well, having a business makes a big difference you know, because we do a lot of deliveries and uh, I believe we're paying one third more for gas than we should be. Companies that rely on transportation to deliver their goods and services have no option but to adhere to rising costs. But for some families, driving has become a luxury instead of a necessity. Raj Mandawa says the price of gas, combined with the price of insurance, has directly affected his lifestyle. Uh, actually, we used to have two cars, our family, my wife and myself. But we park one car, we drive only one car right now. While the continuing unrest in the Middle East and the shutting down of four major oil refineries in the U.S. are contributors to the rise, a gas hike this time of year is nothing unusual. Gulf Humber marketing professor Paul Finlayson explains this trend. Over the summer, consumers traditionally uh, um, use more gasoline because they travel more. So if you put if you put that pressure on the demand side, it just tends to raise the price. Though city dwellers don't have a choice of lowering the cost of gas to budget with the high cost of living, they do have one other option. We will move to somewhere else where it's the cheapest. That's the only way. Well, southern Ontario hasn't seen as drastic as this change as cities like Vancouver and Montreal. Oil industry analysts predict that Torontonians will be paying up to $1.45 per litre by mid-summer. And because the oil industry runs on supply and demand, as fuel availability decreases, prices at the pump will go up. One thing's for sure, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Bailey Martell, Humber News. Gas prices peaked at $1.40 in Toronto just before the Easter long weekend. It's uncertain whether prices will stabilize or continue to rise. Checks are in the mail for thousands of Humber College students who applied to receive a tuition rebate from the provincial government. While many welcome the extra cash, some say the 30% rebate wasn't all it was cracked up to be. January saw long lines of students hoping to qualify for the tuition rebate. Only students out of high school for four years or less were eligible. OSAP recipients avoided the headache of applying. 
referrals have students, it's an automatic process uh, and they will not have to submit another application. It's only students who have not submitted an OSAP application this year that will have to apply. The rebate's purpose was to offset tuition costs and help with the rising price of textbooks and supplies. I can only buy a couple of books with it, so that's the thing is that our the money they, they're giving us back isn't going to cover all the books we need. For students who did receive the rebate, the semester's costs were a little bit lighter. Many students burdened by debt or worried about tuition costs are looking ahead towards financial stability after graduation. They're hoping Humber's reputation and connections will help with that transition. Royale Edwards has details. Although job growth is moving at a slow pace in Canada, students are getting an opportunity to get on the payroll. But the one question remains asked, are students ready? I'm actually looking for internship through school and um, I feel pretty prepared. The school pretty pays you with classes regarding your resume. They also have on campus um, things that help you fix up your resume, your cover letter. So I feel pretty prepared right now. At Humber, the Career Center is the best place to start, and career advisor Angela Nunez says she encouraged students to go after all job opportunities that may come their way. Well, there's no secret that the real reason why students come to college is to get gainful employment at the end of their study. So um, whenever there's news of um, increase in employment, then I always encourage students to take advantage of that, get out there, see what's happening. Although the semester is coming to an end and graduation is just around the corner, students can look forward to part-time and full-time employment from over 1,900 different employers. Royal Edwards, Humber News. Graduates entering the job market aren't the only ones struggling to find stable employment, even when people who've established careers are considering leaving the rat race behind to become their own boss. Alexandra Gundy reports on this growing trend. Curiosity, ambition, and a stagnant job market attracted over 4,000 attendees to the National Business and Franchise Show in Toronto. Frustrated with the stalled economy, many Canadians are looking to take charge of their own careers. I actually was laid off in, in last quarter and it's made me kind of think about my own destiny and being the master of my own destiny and so why not try to invest in a business that, that matters to me. And the show attracted more prospective first-time buyers than usual. Canada's pace of employment is lagging far behind its population growth, leaving many without jobs. Attendees visited over 120 exhibitor booths to explore career options. Over the last year, uh, we found that traffic is up, yes, due to economic is changes. So there is more and more people, they want, to, they want to go on their own business. At its roots, a show like this is all about sales, and prices are steep. A franchise can range anywhere from $250,000 to $3 million, and the application process is often rigorous. Raising the necessary capital investment is a big challenge, but franchisor Jeff Parisi says career changers often find a way. And some people who are been, have been in other businesses who have been either um, um, pensioned off or let go or laid off and have a little bit of a severance package and decided they don't want to go back into that corporate scene again and they want to be in their own business. Buying a franchise is a big financial risk, and according to a report prepared by the Research Strategy Group in Toronto, almost half of franchisees surveyed considered starting their own independent business first. I'm looking to invest in a, a business. Um, I've been in business for about 25 years but I want to take the skill set that I have earned and uh, acquired and apply it to a business that matters to me. Pizza company Panago has 170 franchise locations, just a fraction of the over 78,000 total franchise units across Canada. Whether one sells pizza or coffee, many believe the name recognition that accompanies a franchise is invaluable. People looking to take their career into their own hands may see a coffee shop like this and think, if you brew it, they will come. Alexandra Gundy, Humber News. Several popular websites shut themselves down in a protest over freedom of speech earlier this semester. The U.S. government was met with outrage over a proposed bill which, if passed, would have affected the many ways people use the Internet. You may have heard about SOPA, or the Stop Online Piracy Act during the protest, but it wouldn't have been from Wikipedia. The popular website was one of the many that blacked out to aware, raise awareness of the proposed U.S. bill. The new law would have targeted websites that don't hold, host their own materials, much like how copyright laws are enforced on DVDs and books. The bill's opponents said the legislation would hinder the right to free speech. Humber instructor Rob Robson said the effects of SOPA would have been astounding. 
Uh, I suspect that if you want to take down every website with copyright infringement, you're talking about 90% of the internet, probably including most of the government sites. Just a guess. The bill originally was really created to target popular uploading sites. Mega Video was shut down for hosting pirated movies and TV shows. The bill wasn't passed, leaving many websites free to upload whatever videos, images, or links they want for the time being. Coming up after the break, we'll take a look at some little kids and some big copies. We'll also explore one of the greatest unsolved mysteries in Canadian history. Stay tuned to Humber News for more.